Today we're going to be talking about the great high priest. But before I talk about the high priest, I want to talk to you about a lower priest. Just one. John the Baptist, or the baptizer, as he is called in many circles. Last weekend, traditionally, is our weekend to where we focus on John the Baptist. But we were blessed to have a pageant here, and I'm so happy we did. I'll actually be talking about that. Uh, it's wonderful to have the pageant here. But I can't let liturgy pass by us without mentioning John the Baptist. It's just something about him that just uh, that lights me up. John, of course, we, we know him uh, through his stories that we've heard all of our life, but John was a priest. He's not like a regular priest. He didn't have the long flowing robes and the, the ornate fabric that the priests have. He didn't teach in the synagogues or teach in the temple or anything, but he was a priest. He was a priest because of his lineage. You see, his mom, Elizabeth, was of the Aaronic tribe. So... She was a descendant from Aaron. So he was, for all intents and purposes, he was a priest. He was a priest, but he was also a prophet. And that's what we know about John the Baptist more than anything, is that he was a prophet. And some people will say that he was a New Testament prophet. But I say that he was an Old Testament prophet. I... I believe that he was the last of the Old Testament prophets. For after all, his ministry started before Jesus even began his ministry. So how could he be a New Testament prophet? Um, but that's, you know, that may not be too terribly important uh, to most people. But John preached the law. He was all about the law. And he continued to do this until, until the last See, John, they knew he was coming. 400 years earlier, the previous prophet, Malachi, spoke of John in no uncertain terms. He talked about John in a couple of different ways. He said, of course, it was a voice in the wilderness, and we've all, we've all heard that. But in the, at the very beginning of chapter 3, he starts talking, he starts using some different languages about refinement. And he talked about John... John about refinement and purification. And when you think of that refining, you think of that with something precious, right? You refine, we, we know about oil refineries, of course, but you also refine gold and silver and things like that. You refine this because you want to draw the impurities out. And in order to get the impurities out, you have to use fire. And you know, that comes into context too when you start talking about fire purifying us. But the thing is, you only refine things that you find valuable, right? You know that gold is valuable, so it's refined. Silver, the same way. And that's just like us. And just like Israel. See, God loves us so much. And he loved Israel so much. He knew that they needed to be refined. So he brought into this, this language he, that Israel needed, needed refinement, um, and that sort of brings us into Christ Jesus because that is the ultimate refinement. In our text today, we read from Hebrews. Just a little background information. We really don't know who wrote Hebrews. There is some speculation about who it might have been. Uh, you know, different people have different, different opinions on that. But the theology and the, the language and... Just everything that was written in there is so spot on with the rest of Scripture. They couldn't exclude it from the canon. So it was included in there. The author, of course, is talking about priests. But when you think about priests, what they do is that they pass through the, they pass through the tabernacle. And we, we remember this because they would go through once a year. They would go through the tabernacle into the Holy of Holy one day a year. In Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement, they would go all the way through there, and only the high priest is allowed to go into the Holy of Holies for this sacrifice because it would atone for his sins and the sins of all of Israel and everybody that, that he was praying for. But see, he walked through the temple to get through there. What our writer in Hebrews says today was that Jesus passed through heaven 
to get to us. He didn't go through the temple to get to the Holy of Holies. He came through heaven to come down to us for our refinement. And he came down. And there was no blood sprinkling onto the, the altar like they used to do. They used to spread, they used to set blood around the base of the altar, you know, for the sacrifice. He didn't sprinkle the blood. He shed his blood for us. It's another type of refinement. In verse 15 we read, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. So he passes through heaven and comes down to us to feel all the stuff that we're feeling, to have all of those emotions right in front of him. To be abused and hurt more than most of us can imagine. But he did that because God loves us so much it had to be done. In Malachi, Malachi talked about the coming of John the baptizer. The Baptist talked about the coming of of Jesus. But see, we already knew that Jesus was coming. John talked about Jesus coming, but he also talked about it way earlier. If you remember, he talked about it through Elizabeth. When Mary came in, just like we saw in that wonderful reenactment this past Sunday from Miss Cosgrove. She leapt. <laughs> if you remember that, it was adorable. But uh, John leapt in the womb because he knew that Jesus was present. John told us about Jesus even before he could talk. Our faith reminds us that Jesus is coming. And what's really wonderful about this season. And I would hope that you would continue to do this throughout this Advent season. Is that we think about, we think about what it would have been like to have been expecting Jesus to come on that first Christmas. We have a wonderful gift because there's a lot of traditions in the church that don't have this season. And we get, we get the expectation. It's twofold. Because we get to think about what it must have been like to have been all those people that were waiting the long-awaited Messiah to be coming right then and there and to know that it was happening right now. Can you imagine them being there at that time knowing that's what was happening? So we get to think about that and complicate, com you know, just um, you know, contemplate what it would have been like to have that expectancy. But we also get the wonderful gift of knowing that he's coming again in the last days this advent season we remember that he's coming again to bring a new kingdom that all of us get to be a part of and that we're all going to be there a celebration like no other so it's amazing that we get to do this even on wednesday nights <laughs> Which is a, 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 a wonderful tradition. So this Advent, let's let's remind us, let's let's remember the coming of the baby Jesus, but also the coming of the great high priest, not just any high priest, the great high, pri high priest, the King of all creation, our King, Lord of all, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now the peace that passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus.